If WebAssembly and WASI existed in 2008, we wouldn't have needed to create Docker. That's how important it is. WebAssembly on the server is the future of computing. When a new technology comes along that causes a founder of one of the most popular open source projects to ask existential questions about said project, it's worth taking a look. If you've heard of WebAssembly before, it might have been in the context of 3D games in the browser, so you can have yet another way to waste time during the workday. It turns out that fast browser-based applications are just the tip of the WebAssembly iceberg. WebAssembly is suitable for the browser for two main reasons. Number one, the code can be run on any platform for which there is a WebAssembly runtime. And number two, code is always run in a sandbox environment environment and cannot assume access to any system resources. Wait, isn't this similar to what Docker provides? WebAssembly is a portable binary code format that aims to be as similar to native machine code as possible. Because of all of this, it's not hard to visualize a future where WebAssembly binaries become another popular way to deploy software to production. An open source project called Wasmer is one of the most popular ways to run WebAssembly on the server today. This video is actually sponsored by Wasmer, which I'm ecstatic about because I think their vision for WebAssembly on the server is pretty interesting. Wasmer is a WebAssembly run time that you can install by executing the shell command on the front page of wasmer.io. It's also available via Homebrew if you're on Mac OS. You can then use it to execute WebAssembly binaries, contained in a .wasm file, by passing the path to the binary via a command line argument. The same folks that built Wasmer also created the WebAssembly Package Manager, or WAPM. One of the really cool things about WAPM is that you can actually try out packages submitted by other developers right in the browser, without even installing them to your local machine. Like most package managers, developers can submit packages that contain contain either binaries or shared libraries. The fact that these packages are WebAssembly opens up some really interesting doors for both of these use cases. Shared libraries submitted to WAPM, again, because they're WebAssembly, become usable by any project written in a language for which a WebAssembly integration exists. Wasmer currently provides support for running embedded WebAssembly in nearly every popular programming language. For the binary package case, applications submitted to WAPM can run at near native speeds on any platform for which a WebAssembly runtime exists. Nearly all of today's popular high-level programming languages have some level of support for compiling to WebAssembly. One nice thing about the great WebAssembly support is that it's often simple to port existing open source projects to WebAssembly with little or few changes. Once compiled to WebAssembly, such a project can then be submitted to the WebAssembly package manager to make it easily consumable by others. Let's look at an example of this. The open source MD book project converts Markdown to HTML, and it was actually used to create the official Rust book. Okay, so we've cloned the MD book repository from GitHub. The first thing we're going to do is add WASM32 WASI to our Rust environment. This is the compilation target that allows us to compile to WebAssembly. If we compile a project using this target, we should get a .wasm file in our build directory. To add that compilation target to our Rust environment, we're going to do rust up target add wasm32-wasi. And WASI is what's called an ABI or application binary interface. An ABI is similar to an API in that it's a set of functions that your code can call. An ABI is more along the lines of system level functions like opening files or opening network sockets. At the time this video is being recorded, the WASI standard is actually still under development, but it's a standardized set of functions. If they know they're running in a WASI compatible environment, those applications can call those functions. There's another compilation target called wasm32-unknown-unknown that'll allow us to compile to WebAssembly, but it won't give our application the ability to call those WASI functions. So now that we have the compilation target installed, let's try building MDBook with the wasm32-wasi target. And to do that, we'll do cargo build dash dash target wasm32 wasi. Uh-oh, okay, the build failed. It seems like we can't compile mdbook to wasm right out of the box, so maybe there's some changes we have to make. Let's look at what we might have to do. Okay, so I see all these error messages related to sockets, and if I scroll all the way up, Okay, it says open is not supported on this platform. And open is actually a dependency of MDBook. It seems like the open crate doesn't support wasm32 wasi as a compilation target. It turns out that somebody has actually submitted a pull request for fixing this issue. Let's take a look at that pull request. So we can see this fellow submitted a pull request. And the goal of this pull request is to enable building for wasm32 wasi. This is a good example of the sort of change you might have to make to get a project building WebAssembly. And if we take a look at the code, we can see this pull request consists of making one of the dependencies of MDBook optional, and that's this open crate, and changing the default features to 
include open. Before this change, open would be a required dependency. And because it doesn't support WASM as a compilation target, that's going to be problematic if we want to compile this project to WASM. So we make that dependency optional. Now Rust has this concept of features. If we, if we set this optional equals true flag for a given dependency, our project now has a feature with the same name as that dependency that can be turned off and on at compilation time. Since we added this optional equals true flag, that means now at compilation time, we can specify whether this dependency should be included. Because the author of this PR included open in the default feature set, that means by default, this dependency will be included. If we disable the default features and manually specify our own set of features when we compile, we can effectively get rid of this dependency. So the other thing they did was check in the code using the CFG macro, whether the open feature is off or on in a certain part of the code. And if it's off, then we wanna spit out this error message. So I've actually already applied this pull request locally. So let's go ahead and try specifying a set of features at compile time and seeing if it builds. I've just covered kind of the surface of this, but if you wanna know more about optional dependencies and features, check out chapter three of the cargo book. I've already merged this pull request locally, so I have the code changes I just showed you. And we're gonna try building again, but we're gonna disable the default set of features, and we're gonna specify our own set of features such that the dependency on open is removed. So we're gonna do cargo build target wasm32 wasi just like before. Then we're also gonna set this no default features flag. And then we're gonna specify our own set of features and the features we're gonna specify are search and watch. Don't worry about what those mean yet. All you need to know is that that set of features does not require the open crate. And our build succeeded this time. Now let's see if we got a .wasm file in the target directory. Yep, looks like we got a file called mdbook.wasm. Now to run this, we're gonna install wasmer. And there's two ways to install wasmer. One is via homebrew. So you just do brew install wasmer. Okay, or you can just copy the shell command from the wasmer.io website. Copy that. Either way works. Now that we have wasmer, we can run our .wasm binary. That was the output of our cargo build. So first, to make things a little easier, let's cd into that output directory. Now again, mdbook converts markdown files to HTML to make a static website. I'm not gonna cover the details of the format that mdbook requires. All you need to know for this example is that I've created a book in markdown format in this test underscore book directory. And so we're gonna cd into that directory and run wasmer from there. So mdbook has a build command. You pass in the build as an argument and it'll do that markdown to HTML conversion. So I'm gonna go into the test book directory where all my markdown is. I'm gonna run the wasmer binary that I just installed. And we're gonna say dash dash dir dot, which gives wasmer permission to read and write files in the current directory. One of the nice features about WebAssembly is the security. So everything, if a wasm application needs file system access, it needs to be explicitly given that access when you run wasmer, which is a good thing. So to do that, mdbook is gonna to need to read the markdown and write the result to the the file system, we're gonna explicitly give it permission to the current directory when we run wasmer. And then we're gonna point wasmer to the wasm binary in the parent directory. This is all you need to do to actually run a wasm application, but then we're gonna pass a command line argument to our wasm application, and that's the string build, which will tell mdbook that we wanna convert that markdown to HTML. Looks like that ran successfully. We should see a book directory in here. And yeah, that contains all our HTML. So let's try opening that up in the browser. Okay, and this uh, this is a static web page that corresponds to the markdown that I wrote. Code example here, you can see it looks a lot like the official Rust book. Now you see how simple it can be to compile an existing project to WebAssembly, even if WebAssembly wasn't the original compilation target that the author had in mind. Now that we have our WebAssembly binary file, let's see if we can submit this to the WebAssembly package manager. If you installed wasmer via the command on wasmer.io, you should already have the WAPM binary. If you installed wasmer via homebrew, you'll also have to do brew install WAPM to get WebAssembly Assembly package manager. The first thing you'll need to do when you set up the WebAssembly package manager is click the sign up button. You'll need to make an account and you, you can log in with your Google or GitHub account, or you can create an account specifically for WebAssembly package manager. Once you create an account and logged in, you'll actually need to go to click on this icon in the upper right and go to settings. You'll need an access token to log in with WAPM on the command line locally. Click on this access 
access tokens item and then click create token uh, and then call your token something click create this is the command you'll need to copy and paste to the command line once you do this you'll be able to publish packages to the repository we're still in the same directory as the wasm file to start getting our binary ready for submission to the WebAssembly package manager we're going to run a command called wapm in it and it's basically a wizard that'll ask us some questions and it's going to generate a toml file based on our answers that toml file is going to contain some metadata to tell wapm how to publish our package so it's going to ask for a name and names are always prefaced with a username so my username in this case is me163 me163 slash mdbook is our package name and that's how it's going to appear in the package manager we're going to say version 1.0.1 uh, we're gonna enter a description. You can see I've already done one here. Uh, just a simple description of what the package is or what it does. And it's gonna ask for a path to the .wasm file. It's already populated here, but you enter your whatever .wasm file. It's also gonna ask for a an ABI. And I think in most cases you use WASI here. WASI is gonna be the standard. There's some other ABIs in the WebAssembly world that are a little more proprietary. So anyway, we're gonna choose WASI here. It's gonna ask me to verify the toml file that it created. Now we can see the wapm.toml file that the wizard created for us here. And this is what's gonna be read when we run wapm publish. Now all we need to do is run wapm publish and it should be published to the WebAssembly package manager. It says successfully published package. Now let's go to wapm.io and see if we can see our package. And you can see it actually already comes up in search results. So me163 slash mdbook. And we can see it's got its own page on wapm.io. It's got a command for installing it for via the WebAssembly package manager. This is the really cool part. Look at this. I can actually run it from in the browser. I can run the binary that I just published in the browser because it's WebAssembly. That's pretty cool. So I can just do mdbook here. Yeah, it runs. Obviously, I don't have an environment where I have a book that I can translate from Markdown to HTML. I think the fact that I can run what I just published is pretty cool. Now, imagine I'm on the consumer side of things, and I found this package that this amazing developer created, and I want to install it locally on my machine. I've tried it in the browser, and I like what it does, and I'm ready to install locally. I just do wapm install me163 slash mdbook, and now it's installed locally in a wapm packages directory. Now I have the binary here that I can just run with Wasmer. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's a brief overview of Wasmer and WAPM. I think WebAssembly on the server is actually really interesting. Docker is a great way to deploy your application to production, but when you want to deploy with Docker, you have to create an image, which includes a bunch of operating system binaries that, that aren't really specific to your application. WebAssembly on the server is interesting because your WebAssembly binary is essentially self-contained. Security and privileges are uh, first-class citizens in the WebAssembly world. This, this ecosystem is still in the very, very early days. Imagine this as being the early days of NPM, and you can be one of the first developers to submit a package. I think WebAssembly Package Manager is really interesting for libraries too, because you can build a library using any language you want, and that library can be consumed from any language. Right now we have a situation where we have duplicate libraries for every language ecosystem. So for example, in Go you have a crypto library, in Rust you have a crypto library, in C you have a crypto library. Imagine if the developers of all those crypto libraries coalesce and work on one crypto library that's compiled to WebAssembly and can be consumed from any language. It seems a lot more efficient because you take all the, you, you take the developers from all 10 of those crypto libraries and put them all to work on one library the quality of that library theoretically and the security of that library should improve substantially. So I think this ecosystem is actually really interesting for kind of defragmenting the open source library space and sort of merging the developers from these different language ecosystems. Obviously it would take a while for something like that to happen, but it's interesting to think about. Let me know in the comments what you all think of this. Do you think this is interesting? Do you think it's a fad? Yeah, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So that's a brief overview of WebAssembly on the server and WASMer and the WebAssembly package manager. Hope you guys liked it and we'll see you in the next one.